Hey guys, this is Blake from Blake Sanctum, retro site for retro games. Welcome to another big episode in my special website and video series on how to play classic civilization genre games like Colonization, Master of Magic, Test of Time, Alpha Centauri, Call to Power, and of course the Civ series itself in HD using either special versions, tricks, or mods. I'll also be doing bonus videos in this series touring some of the awesome fan games and my favorite scenarios and mods for all these games, as well as my own personal mods while also trying to sneakily play as the Barbarians via hacks or cheats. Check out the playlist link up top or in the video description and comments below to see the other episodes. Hey guys, this is the very first episode in a big new video series I'm making about how to play classic civilization games like Colonization, Master of Magic, and of course Civilization itself in HD. And this is my Civilization 1 HD modded tour video. Now to play Civ 1 in HD, you need the Windows version, which had rather unpopular graphics and sounds. However, I'm going to show you guys how I've modded it to make it more like the awesome old DOS version, but in lovely HD with beautiful music quality. Now, so you guys can see these differences, I'm first going to show you what this game looks like in HD with no mods applied. Then I'll turn on the mod to show you the differences. And then I'll talk about how I managed to play as the Barbarians against the world, which I'll be covering in greater detail in a separate video in this series. And finally, I'll cover something really cool that many people probably don't know about, that you can play scenarios for Civ 1, and that I am working to preserve them. So if you want to skip ahead to any of those parts I've mentioned, then I'll be putting time skip links in the video description below. And I'll probably do more bonus episodes in the future, expanding on some of this content even further. So there'll be a playlist link in the video description below as well. Anyway, let's start. Now, right now I'm showing you the unmodded version of Civilization for Windows, so I can show you why a lot of Civ DOS players, like myself, that grew up playing the DOS version, didn't really like Civ uh, for Windows due to various imperfections. Um, but I, I'm going to show you how to fix them all. Now, we've just witnessed the first, which is, you'll notice the music cut out after about 10 or 15 seconds. And it's using the same music for the intro as it was on the title screen. Whereas in the DOS version, you got two separate tracks. And for this intro, you had a, like, which goes for about three minutes, you had a song that went for the entire duration. Whereas, yeah, for some reason, all that was chopped out. Now, to show you uh, the imperfection too, I actually need to go ahead. So we'll skip this. Go Chieftain 7. Uh, we'll just, I don't know, we'll pick American so I can show you the music for that that's it literally five seconds five seconds was is, is all you get for the Americans and same with all the other races all their tracks which in the DOS version can be a minute or a minute and a half long are about five seconds in the Windows version which is just terrible now I'm gonna load a save game to show you the uh, the graphics issues so I've loaded a recent uh, save game of mine, and as you can see, Civilization for Windows has a number of advantages. The, the biggest one being, as you can clearly see, it's scalable. You can play, you know, because everyone was rocking crazy different sort of CRT resolutions back in the 90s, um, uh, th this version's very scalable, so you can play, you know, the original Civ 1 in HD, like 180p. And, you know, on a big screen, it looks amazing. If you're viewing this on a small screen, it may not look that great, but um, but on a big screen, it's incredible. I, mean, I can see half the planet almost. And uh, all the water's animating, which didn't happen in the DOS version. You just had a few waves. Um, there's, you can tell it's clearly twice the resolution pretty much. There's about twice as many pixels crammed into each tile which means there's a lot more detail like the deer, horses, like resources look really good. It's just, you know, everything looks, you know, more detailed. And the unit icons too, they're able to pack in more details into there so you can identify the units quite well. Um, 
but you know that's sort of where the things I really like kind of end. I mean, if you if you're someone like me who spent like five, six years, whatever, you know, years and years playing the DOS version, and then you come to this, it's it's kind of like ah, it just looks so dark and drab and just you know the DOS version was so full of life and color. And, you know, like, whoever thought to make the city screen yellow and brown is just, oh, God, they should be shot. Because, <laughs> I mean, the, the DOS version had a beautiful blue background to that kind of stuff. So, all right, let's 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 switch over to the modded version. I've, I've shown enough of this one. And I'll show you all the things I and others have fixed. Now, the first thing I wanted to fix was the soundtrack, because... I don't really know why they did what they did because there are other Windows 3.11 and Windows 95 games out there that did use a Windows version of MIDI playing. So I don't know why they didn't just get their hands on that. But um, for some reason they decided to convert all of the DOS version MIDI tracks into really low quality WAV files and because WAV files were so still ma you know so massive they uh, they chop them down to about you know 10 or 5 or 20 seconds depending on how important the track was now as you can hear here here in my version it's nice high quality it's still playing it keeps going so I'll start a new game now the first thing um, I should point out is that I'm unable to fix the whole using the same songs for the title and the intro that requires someone with good uh, sip when hacking skills to uh, tell it to use two different tracks and if someone does do that well then I can certainly supply the, the, the separate tracks to do that but um, to solve the problem with my skill set I basically just uh, merged the two songs together um, and chopped off a little bit of the slow build up and, and slow middle bits so that um, it all uh, works out to three minutes in length which fits this intro perfectly and um, I actually noticed when I came across a copy of this uh, Sip One soundtrack, that um, the title track actually ends in a way that flows straight into the intro song anyway, so it almost is one song. But as for getting that, so yeah, I realized that if, if this game was playing using WAV files, then perhaps I could replace them with the with big, long WAV files, because no one cares about big WAV files these days. And so I went hunting on YouTube, and I managed to find um, uh, a video released by uh, a guy called Barbarian Bros, who uh, recorded the entire Civ 1 soundtrack, uh, composed by Jeff Briggs, I think his name was. Um, he recorded it using an authentic, real Roland MT32, I think they're called, and uh, it was, you know, basically the it was like the sound card for the rich people back in the day. Most of us just had a sound blaster if we were lucky, a sound blaster 16 or something, you know, <laughs> and uh, or you know, or much worse. And so you know, it was a dream to uh, people dreamed of having a, a Roland or a General MIDI, um, you know, sort of a proper sound card. But um, so this guy had one, and he did a full recording of the Sip One soundtrack and put it on YouTube. And I contacted him and said, "Is it all right if I use your?" songs to do a soundtrack overhaul mod and he went I can uh, yes and I can do one better than that you can have my original WAV files um, uncompressed uh, and so he gave them to me and uh, so I was able to use them to overhaul the entire soundtrack for Civ Win. so not only have I fixed the problem with Civ Win's cut down low quality um, soundtrack but I've actually also given it such high quality songs that most DOS players will be like, hang on, this sounds better than what I'm used to because it sounds better than, you know, no one had a Roland generally. Uh, so it, it's uh, it's an upgrade for everyone um, in the end. So uh, that, that's how I got it. And so thank you to Barbarian Bros for doing that. And I'll put a link to his video for anyone interested in my description to check that out. And, you know, I, I mean, I loved playing Civ as a kid. I play... Uh, I, like I said before, I played the DOS version for years and years and years, and um, I really, you know, nostalgically, I really love that version. So that's why I also wanted to sort out the whole graphics thing. So uh, we'll just click all this again, show American again, and you should now hear, yep, the full America song. This will go for about a minute or a minute and a half. I won't, you know, play the whole thing, but, but you know, now when you get diplomacy screen and other stuff, you, or when you get a tech things like that, 
you'll get the full soundtrack. Get the full victory music, the losing music, all that stuff now is there. No more five, ten second uh, low quality stuff. And in the end, it's not that big. I think it, uh, in the end, my mod's about uh, 20 or 30 megs. So, I mean, you know, <laughs> that's nothing these days. So, let's go in. And I'm going to load my save game again. But you can already see. <laughs> Oh, and I should point out that SIP1 only played music tracks when certain events happened. But how about for the purposes of this video, I play the awesome Roland32 quality tracks I used in my mod in the background from now on. So here we go guys, as you can see, DOS graphics on the Windows version. Which opens up other cool possibilities too, since if you can import DOS graphics and animations into Civ Win. Then what's to stop someone porting in the very green and uh, colourful Super Nintendo Civ 1 graphics, which have already been extracted and posted at Civ Fanatics in Honza's thread. The SNES version of Civ 1 is actually quite fun to play due to the different feel it has, although not as different as the PlayStation version, which is isometric. A lot of people out there probably don't even know that there's a 2.5D isometric Civ 2 style looking version of Civ 1 out there, so I might actually do a bonus episode on that soon. But anyway, back to the Civ DOS graphics mod. Now, you know, obviously people who started with Civ Win and didn't start with the DOS version, they'll probably look at the DOS version and go, ugh, yuck, it's so fake, and you know, it's so blocky and blah blah blah, but um, for, for most of us who started with the DOS version, I mean, it's, yeah, it's beautiful. I, I have so much nostalgic love for this, this graphic set, and plus, you know, yes, it's probably half the resolution, um, but when you're viewing it in HD, like the the, the the lower resolution tiles don't look so low res anymore, and it looks great. I mean, it's uh, doesn't look blocky at all. It looks wonderful in HD, and uh, you know, the, the, I just love the colors. And check this out. Look at that. The, so this is using a mod. I, I can't claim responsibility for this mod. I just did the soundtrack. That's simple. Whereas this requires real skill. Um, uh, a very talented user on the Civ Fanatics forum, uh, I think his name's Honza. Uh, apologies if I get that wrong, I'll put a link to his thread in the video description so you can actually see him and his work and thank him and all that kind of stuff. He modded Civ Win to have the uh, Civ DOS graphics. I'm so glad he did the city screen because I hated that yellow. And now it's the nice blues of the DOS version. I think the DOS one might have had a bit of a pattern on it, but that's too hard to do. Um, I'll, I'm happy with the colour. And uh, yeah, it just looks great. And oh, for the keen eye, if you've noticed some glitches here, you will have also noticed those same glitches were in my other um, part where I was showing you the original graphics. That has nothing to do with the mod pack. That's me being sneaky and putting railroads on ocean. It's a trick you can do. You can put a settler on a transport and get them to build stuff. Um, and you get some extra uh, some trade out of it compared to regular squares. Uh, it's a sneaky little cheat um, game bug uh, taking advantage thing. Um, but anyway, yeah, so... Uh, as you can see, it, this is a big game, you know, I, I, I played a passive game, like where I wasn't, you know, destroying the world, I just wanted to be able to get all the techs and play God and bully the other sibs a little bit, um, and then build a, uh, send a spaceship and try and get the highest score possible, so that was my objective, so I sort of left them alone mostly, other than occasional harassment and uh, peacekeeping, shall we call it. Um, but yeah, uh, it's, you know, I, I, like I say before, I loved playing uh, Civ 1, so to come back and play Civ 1 using its classic graphics and a full soundtrack in HD has just been a brilliant experience. And, you know, it's not easy to get working. I should point out um, that th these old Windows 3.11 and 95 Windows apps are like 16 bits, so they won't run on modern Windows operating systems. So, to get this working, uh, once again, those with a keen eye would have noticed at the start of this video that um, there was a Windows XP Bliss background, and that's because. I'm running this in a Windows XP virtual machine, um, and I'm using a, a VM program called uh, Oracle VirtualBox. I quite like that one. Um, it, it, I mean, there's probably other ones out there, maybe better ones, but I, I just quite like that one. So uh, pick whatever VM software you prefer. Windows has its own too, you can get from Microsoft. And uh, slap XP on there. I mean, yeah, you can put 98 or 95 on there, or even 3.11, I suppose. Um, but I find that, like, 
it seems to be just be more stable and looks better and it's just quicker and it just runs well um, on an XP build on um, these old games. And plus I think it'd be much harder to get those other older operating systems up to HD resolution. Uh, I'm not quite sure how much tinker will be required if it's even possible. But um, yeah, so uh, that, that's what I've done to do this. Uh, and yeah, I, I love it. I mean, if, you've, if your host system is a 32-bit one still, like say 32-bit Windows 7 or something, then you're fine. You don't need any of this. But uh, for, for anyone who's got a more modern 64-bit operating system, you'll need a virtual machine to do this. And uh, yeah, I love the results. It's, it's been great to come back and do this. And uh, I'm going to do more videos. Uh, I'm going to show you how to play Master Magic and Colonization HD. I'm also going to do some Civ 2 and Civ 3 videos. Um, and also I'll show you one more thing, which is um, I decided to do have another game and to finish something I started as a child, which was to play as the Barbarians. And I never finished that game, but I'm a much better player these days. So I decided to try every trick I could think of to have a more successful game and also see what kind of great editing programs were out there to to give the barbarians more of a chance um, not an advantage but just a chance of survival and winning and uh, I succeeded so I'll, I'll lose save game for that now okay so here we go this was a barbarian game I just finished um, and I also forgot to say um, if you're if you're not looking at this on a big screen you're probably going ah oh, everything's too small so um, sadly Civ 1 for Windows doesn't have zoom controls unlike colonization for Windows and uh, newer games uh, so I would recommend just lower the resolution of, of your virtual machine windows and then then stretch it to full screen still um, and that should solve the problem with that. A bit of tinkering will get you there. But anyway, um, yeah, so this was a Barbarian game where I, I used uh, the, the brilliant, was it, J. Cived to, um, uh, which is like a map maker, Civ 1 editing program to design a whole Civ 1 game. And then I played it in the DOS version of Civ because I just couldn't get a good Barbarian game going in the in this Windows version. Um, and uh, and then I've since uh, someone has handed me a uh, an editor for the Windows version, um, which has allowed me to and it, it actually also was a converter, so I was able to convert the DOS save game over to Windows to show you this uh, stuff now. So I had a really fun game. You'd be surprised how much you can do. I mean, because you're not meant to play as barbarians, they've got some horrible um, bugs and disadvantages. Like you can't change what a city's building, and if and if you try in the Windows version, it actually crashes the game. Um, and also a lot of barbarian, ne pretty much nearly all barbarian units will auto pillage any square they step on. You can't stop them from doing it. They won't kill roads and railroads, but they'll kill irrigation and mines. So, um, you know, I ended up having to work a, uh, a clever tactic with settlers to still do a little bit of irrigating and mines. But, um, you know, they've, uh, like there's all kinds of issues that they have. So if you set up a few starting cities to do some clever stuff, like what, have one building buildings to sell, um, have another one um, building sort of chariots, and one building catapults, and one building phalanx. And, uh, you know, it's still extreme. You might think it just gives you too much of an advantage, but it's extremely difficult. Like, uh, AI sibs are, like, invulnerable unless they have two, two cities. Like, they just will not die to barbarians. You can hit them with tanks and they'll still die. Um, you cannot kill these guys. So uh, to beat them, you have to wait for them to get two cities, and then you have to sort of either smash them both at the same time or kill their capital, um, which is extremely difficult because they get massive defense bonuses against barbarians. So that's why you need the catapults, pretty much, especially if they get city walls. And then, um, and then uh, you can either bribe the second city or make sure that it's, they're both empty at the same time and then walk in at the same time. There's the only way to kill people. And it, it took a while, but I got there eventually. And... Uh, yeah, it was uh, really fun. So if you want to, I'm going to do a video showing how I did it, how to use the editors, how to play, switch the player to barbarians. I'm going to cover how to do this. If you want, if you've ever always wanted to have a crazy barbarian game, um, I'm going to do that in a separate video. So I'll put that in the end card and a link up top right now for you to check out. And speaking of those editors I use for this, other people have been using them for years to create amazing scenarios for Civ One that sadly most people probably don't even know about. So I thought I'd show a few now. Now this is Jay Cived, probably the most modern and best Civ 1 editor of them all. As you can do anything in this thing. Like you can change like all the terrains to anything you want. You can place units, you can place cities, you can even go in and edit all the properties of those cities, you can edit all the civs. 
can change so much stuff. You can even go into the units and change their names and do crazy stuff like that. Almost everything is changeable, which of course makes this not just a great save game or map creator, but it actually makes it a scenario creator. Yes, like for Civ 1, you can actually have scenarios because of this thing, because all you gotta do is save it as a save game and send people the save game, and then they just load it up and bang, they've got a scenario ready to go. The only drawback is that it can only save in Civ DOS save game format. But that's where this lovely program comes in, because if you're a Civ Win player, then this program called Civ Cracker, which is slightly oddly named because it's really a Win Civ editor, and even says it up there in the app thing, yet the uh, XE and the zip and all that stuff is called Civ Cracker. But anyway, you, this editor is quite similar to JCIV. It obviously doesn't have quite as many features as that really is the ultimate editor, but it can do most of what JCIV can do. Um, just maybe a little bit harder to find things, but you know, you can still paint your terrain and place units and place cities and you can edit existing, you know, look at this, you can edit the units, the, the city, you can still play with everything. Um, but what makes this editor even better is that you can load the uh, Civ DOS save games and then save them as a, uh, like if I go here, yep, sure. I can actually save it as a .save file, which is the format that WinCiv uses. And WinCiv accepts, uh, you know, custom file names. So if this is a scenario, you can give it the actual scenario name, which makes it even easier when passing files around between people. So, you know, this is really cool. And obviously, you know, people have used this, these programs, to create some really awesome scenarios, most of which are in the depths of the uh, Civ Fanatics and Apolitan forums and download sections. But uh, here's a select few that caught my eye. So, how about I start with probably my favourite scenario that I've found for Civ 1 so far, which is um, a June scenario. Yes, really, June. And, you know, I'm going to be looking at June scenarios for other Civ games too, like Civ 2 and Civ 3 and, and Civ 4, as there's some brilliant ones, but I was not expecting to find one for Civ 1. But it is. I mean, you can see here it says Atreides. Um, the uh, the creator of this uh, scenario has actually uh, renamed the units and the factions and everything. It's brilliant. So if I uh, and the city names as well. So I found the city and uh, now unfortunately all these scenarios are for the DOS version of Civ, but I've converted to uh, Civ for Windows using editors, and I've actually uploaded my converted files to the Civ Fanatics forums, so you'll see them in the thread links I'll be putting in the video description. But anyway, sadly in this particular scenario I've noticed that um, my converted like the scenario has not carried over his unit names. Uh, Civ Win seems to somehow get in the way of that. Whereas if you load it up in the DOS version, you'll actually see he's got special Juneified <laughs> names for every single one of the units, which is a nice touch. But uh, nevertheless, it's not a huge big deal. Um, everything else is thankfully working just fine. Like if I go to, yeah, you'll see I'm Emperor Muad'Dib of the Atreides. And if I look around, which I'm probably, uh, I realise uh, I should be putting up a big spoiler alert, because uh, obviously you're not really meant to see the entire map when you start a game. I've only turned on full view for, purely for this video to do a good tour, because obviously if I load up the save game and everything's black because you haven't explored the world, I'm not exactly showing off the mod too well, am I? So, uh, so apologies to the uh, creators of these mods if I'm spoiling everything, but uh, anyway, uh, if we explore, it's sort of made almost like a planet-like shape. It's actually round, and of course Civ 1 is hard locked to have a, um, like a... I suppose you call it a donut-shaped world, I think they call it, where it just goes on forever, it just keeps going in a circle. But um, nevertheless, he's sort of made a, a planet shape, with, and uh, you've got all these different uh, factions, uh, you've got all the Fremen factions, and you've got, of course, got the, um, the uh, Harkonnen down here, uh, I can see them, and of course it won't tell me about them, I suppose, but... Um, until I meet them, but uh, the Harkonnen are here, and uh, look at this, we've got some interesting uh, Barbarian faction, uh, uh, Arakeen, uh, lots of little outposts, uh, 
Uh, I believe uh, from the editor there, the uh, Imperials. So that's probably the Emperor and his Sadukar. Uh, and looks like there's a few other, yeah, a few other factions to have fun with. And as you can see, it's a you know a massive desert map. And funnily enough, actually, I think that um, uh, the default graphics for Sibwen might actually suit the scenario better. See what I mean? Look at that, you know, that, that sort of um, what some people find horrible, you know, the yellowish graphics of the default uh, Civ for Windows, it actually kind of suits this scenario because, you know, it's a June scenario, it's a desert planet, now there's a lot more yellow. We've still got green and other things, but there's a lot more yellow, which I think is quite, uh, quite fitting for it. So uh, I'll leave it up to you guys, should you wish to try this scenario, how you want to uh, have it displayed. <laughs> you know, I'm so impressed, I'm actually thinking I might play this scenario and do a separate bonus episode in the playlist about it, so uh, keep an eye out for that. Let's go on to the next one. No guys, you are not seeing things. This is a World War II scenario for Civ 1. Now, so many of us loved the World War II scenario that came with Civ 2. I'll be covering it in my Civ 2 video because it was, you know, so much fun. So it's you know, just so cool that fans have made a World War II scenario in Europe for um, for Civ 1. It's just brilliant. And obviously, yeah, once again, the, the donut world effect has to be uh, sort of uh, tackled with um, basically like a sea border. That's what they've done for this. So you've sort of, yeah, just got Europe in the middle. And uh, you've got, uh, of course, yeah, you play as the English in the scenario, although, of course, using one of the editors, you can switch yourself to the Germans or the Russians or someone else if you're feeling adventurous. But, um, yeah, you've uh, got the French down here, although you'd be, <laughs> you'd, be a bit, you'd be a bit on the uh, back foot starting a game as them, of course. I think these are sort of neutrals, as you've got, like, the Free Irish and... Um, some of these sort of Spanish stuff down here as well. They appear to be the same factions. I think they're just sort of a neutral faction. Similar to how the World War II scenario sort of applied for non, non key uh, nations they assigned to um, a neutral faction. Yeah, Greeks and down there, Italians. Which is Turkish and Greeks, isn't it? Mixed together. And of course the Russians up here. Like Norway and all that, to uh, the neutral faction as well. But uh, this is looks like a lot of fun. I mean, all this tanks and artillery and planes ready to go. So, yeah, you guys should check out this one. <laughs> now, here's another one Civ 2 players will find familiar The Rise of Rome. Yes, fans have made a Rise of Rome scenario for Civ 1. And as you can see, this one looks a bit more challenging than the Civ 2 one, as you've basically just got Rome, the Greeks, you know, and Alexander, uh, uh, you know, already a, a matter of a few decades before it sort of overtaken everything in the area, and uh, we've got barbarian factions around the place as well. And uh, yeah, there's a, there's a lot to do here, and uh, I've seen from people's comments and stuff, this scenario is very tough, but you know, what's tough is fun. You don't want it to be too easy, so uh, there's a lot of work to do here. <laughs> My goodness, look at all this. And of course, once again, they've had to use sort of like a mountain sea border to, uh, because it's, you know, just a European map that uh, they can't put the whole world in here for something this big. But uh, this looks like a lot of fun. So if you're a big fan of ancient scenarios and Romans and Greeks and all that kind of stuff, then uh, have a go at this one. And uh, you could even, you know, use an editor to play as one of the other factions. But of course, you know, that's not as big a challenge as playing as the Romans. But obviously they start with a decent army to start charging out in all directions. So yeah, much fun to be had with this one. Want something more fantastical, I hear you say? Well, how about this one then? The creator of the Dune scenario also created this Riverworld scenario based off the uh, the book written by Philip Joe's Farmer. And uh, I haven't read it myself, but I have heard of it. And uh, this is super cool. Look at this. It's a massive map. It basically just follows a giant river. And, uh, of course, it's... Uh, donut shapes I'll just keep going forever if I keep going that way but um, once again you are absolutely stacked against it and I've seen from the comments that it is super hard because look at this I mean you're starting the other sibs that I mean they don't I believe they don't have the rollway tech but they've been given 
them via the editor, like some real ways to give them more production and stuff, so these guys can kill you very quickly. So I've seen a lot of people posting about dying in this scenario, but it looks like such a fun challenge. It's, can you just imagine, like, you know, just having these navies going up and down these rivers trying to take down each uh, enemy as they're all like, expanding in all directions with the tower? Isn't that weak of the barbarian faction that's, that's got that one? Um, Oh wow, that's uh, yeah. This is a looks like a really fun one to play. Now, how about some more World War II? Because this one is Operation Barbarossa. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Apologies. But uh, this is a very popular scenario from Civ 2. I think there's a good one in Civ 3 as well. And basically, it's you know the German invasion of Russia. And, uh, you know, can you do a better job than the real Germans did and uh, clear out Russia? And I believe the scenario creator has set some, um, some rules that obviously can't be enforced because it's Civ 1, but uh, in the thread they've said you need to do it by this date, <laughs> uh, to take the, everything by this date. And uh, I should point out that all these scenarios have interesting rules written up in the thread that you have to sort of try to follow. I mean, you don't have to, but, you, you know, for the fun of it, you can. But uh, anyway, yeah, we, as you can see that we've got... Uh, Lots of tanks and airplanes ready to go from Germany, and uh, because this is obviously all about Germany's invasion of Russia and the Nazi attacks there, uh, we haven't got the rest of Europe. Uh, so France and all that have been cut off. But uh, uh, to, to fit all of uh, everything into a big map, but um, as you can see, a big portion of um, uh, Western <laughs> Russia is here. And uh, looks like there is a lot of fun to be had. So uh, that's another fun World War II scenario for people to muck around with. And how about something a little more fun, hey? This one is called Winter Wonderland. Basically, you're playing as Santa of the Elves, trying to shoot your rocket sleigh up into the stars as quickly as possible. Well, before anyone else does. Starting off in your lovely town of Lapland, and... Uh, as you can see, you, uh, this one's probably more of a custom map than a scenario, but there's a little, you know, he's changed a few things, of course. Um, I believe, hang on, let's have a look. Yep, I'm Emperor Santa of the Elves. So he, he has got some stuff in there for scenario, but, uh, but it's more about the map. I mean, if you can't tell what's going on right now, uh, have a look at the mini-map, and that'll give you a good idea. There we can see reindeer, snowflakes, trees... Oh, what's that, um... Candy cane thingo, presents, <laughs> we got everything here. And of course, this came out in uh, December a few, uh, uh, quite a few years ago um, as a Christmas uh, scenario for everyone to muck around with. So, uh, you know, <laughs> there's a bit of fun for you guys to, uh, if, you, if you're in the mood at the right time of year, of course. Now, I should also say that I've been working to preserve these scenarios I've just shown you, and more, in special collections across multiple sites like Civ Fanatics, ModDB, and Archive.org, to hopefully ensure that they're never lost. So if you want to see more scenarios, or you have some that you want to add to this collection, then check out my preservation project link in the video description. Anyway, to finish off, I'll go back to my own scenario I covered earlier, where you can play as the Barbarians. I gotta say, it's been a blast playing Civ 1 in HD, mucking around with people's scenarios and playing as the Barbarians. And I plan to continue that in this series, as I'm going to play Civ 2 and Civ 3, show you how to do some cool HD modded videos, and on top of that, I'm also going to try and have some Barbarian games, because I've researched and found some fun fan programs or cheats or whatever that allow you to play as them in the later Civ games. So uh, it's going to be, I've basically got two series going on. I've got this uh, Civ, Colonization and Mom uh, games in HD, but I'm also doing a Barbarian series. Uh, as well. So if you're a big Civ fan, make sure you check out my other videos in this series. I'm going to put them all in the same playlist. Plus I plan to cover some of the amazing fan games and awesome total conversion mods out there, including some of my own that I've been working on. Alright, I think that's it for this one. See you on the next video guys. Bye!